Uh, what's up guys, it's Shooky J and today I'm here to show you how to fix a damaged telephone interface box. So this is a two-parter. There's a few things to this. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to fix the wiring inside your telephone interface box because I was stupid and I was carrying a ladder inside my garage and I totally just snapped the box right off the wall which is never a good thing because that leaves my house without telephone. Most of you are wondering, well, if it leaves you without telephone, what about the internet? I have AT&T Uverse, so this is another story, and we'll get to that in a, just a minute. But first, let's just get into this real quick with the tools you're going to need. So this is just a rough estimate. I've never actually done this before, but I'm always willing to teach somebody how to do something and maybe do a little bit of warning myself. So I took a look in the box in advance, and it looks to me that the only things you're going to need are some pliers. I would prefer this kind, the kind with the odd-shaped handles and the crooked teeth. Those are not very good for this purpose. You want something that has a nice flat bite down, not anything that's curved. You also need a pretty good pair of scissors. You're going to want these to be sharp enough to cut through some small 24 gauge wire. And last of all, to complete the splice, because I did actually rip the wiring right out, you are going to need these IDC splice connectors and these are very 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 inexpensive you can get them at Home Depot or Radio Shack or whatever electronics store you may have in your area so this is one of them that I've already pressed in for demonstration purposes uh, this is one that hasn't been pushed in you can see that the button still protrudes from the actual thing so you stick your wire inside here this one in particular is set up for three wires if my camera won't focus nearly good enough for you to see that but you can probably make out three different slots I could do a little project with that but I'm just trying to get it to work I'm not trying to make any projects out of it one good use out of this is if you wanted to keep an existing connection and then slip another wire in there to make another extension but that'll be for another day. All I'm trying to do now is fix it. So you press it in, and there's these little teeth in there that grab onto the wire, slice the insulation just slightly, and it allows you to cut through the insulation but not the wiring, and that gives you a nice solid connection. So again, these are the only supplies you're going to be needing for this fix, and I might also add a screwdriver to screw the interface box back on. But you guys have heard enough of me talking, now let's go see what this is all about. Alright, so we are down in my basement right now, and I'll just show you a few things really quick. So the first thing you're probably going to want to notice is that the telephone base is here, and I can verify that there is a dial tone. I'm not trying to trick you guys or anything, this is a legitimate video, but I'm just showing you, any of you who may have the same issue, if you have AT&T Uverse, you are in luck. This green wire is usually in the back of your gateway, but I have some good news. If your phone goes out, most of the time, if your bill is up to date, and you know you paid it and everything, and you if it's probably an issue that you cause by breaking something, or just the wiring in your house went bad, Nine times out of ten, if you just go back here with your gateway, you take the wire coming out of your home base station, or if you have a wired phone, that, that will also work. You just take it and you put it right in the back of the gateway. Nine times out of ten, that will fix your problem temporarily until you can fix the real issue. So that's another thing I'm going to show you guys how to do. I'm going to show you how to fix the real issue. So one thing, I, like I said before, make sure that this green plug that would usually be up there is unplugged. It's alright to have your main base station or corded phone plugged into there while you're working on it. But please make sure that this green wire is not still connected to the back of your gateway. It's going to be the green flat wire. One's going to say data cable, and one's not going to be labeled at all, but it's going to be flat. Make sure that's not plugged into your gateway while you're doing any work. 
Otherwise, you could short circuit and it could fry your gateway. And that's going to cost you a pretty penny to replace. So I suggest making double sure before you start working that this is the case and it's unplugged. But again, you can still have a phone plugged in, just not your whole entire house. And once we are out in the garage, we can get right to work. So, if you are looking at the screen right now and you have no idea what you're looking at, this video might be a little bit over your head, but if you're willing to try, that at least counts. So, I'll try to give you an idea of what happened here. I was moving a ladder in my garage and it slipped out of my hand and it hit this box, knocked it right off the wall, and as you can see, it left a wire on connected from its splice. Second problem here is this is a god awful splice. These little plastic heat shrink splices, nah, you don't want to use those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to pull this splice right off of here because it's really just an awful splice and that should never have been used in the first place but it was and you know what, this doesn't want to cooperate right now, so I think what I'm going to do is just cut it right there. You want to cut it as close to the splice as possible. Again, if you need to see it, this is the kind of splice you're going to want to stay away from. This plastic heat shrink splice, it's really, really awful, and it comes undone if you even touch it a little bit. So... Discard that, you're never going to want to look at it again because, at least in my case, that was the problem. So, it might not be your problem in this case, but this is just a general tutorial on how to fix phone line issues in the first place. So, what you're going to want to do is get the two wires lined up pretty close. In my case, it's going to be green and black are together. I'm not the one who wired this, obviously, but... That's just how it's done in this case. So what you're going to want to do is line them up real nice and then insert both ends into the splice. So one end goes all the way on the left. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. And you want to stick it in as far as it can possibly go so you're ensuring a great connection. You stick it in as far as it can possibly go and then you reach up there and do the same for the other wire. I'm not going to say exactly what color each wire might be. It's going to be different for everybody who does this pretty much. So get your pliers. This is the tricky part. You're going to want to position yourself in a way that you can push down and squeeze all at the same time. So once you're sure, just give it a nice squeeze. You should hear a nice little snapping sound. That means that it's in all the way, and if you go much tighter, you'll probably end up blowing the whole thing out and cracking it to bits. But, as you can see, that is a good splice right there. It went right in the connection. It's really tight. That's really not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And, as you can see also from the back, the wires are really, really all the way in and it's a really tight splice so the only thing left now is to test the connection and if I did this right that means that if I go inside I should be able to hook into any phone jack in my house and it will work so without further ado let's see if that will actually be the case so we are now back inside my house at the place we were in the beginning of the video you can probably tell the echo has been reduced dramatically so what we're going to do is take this base station upstairs and plug it into the kitchen wall outlet. And if I did this right, that means that I should get a good clear connection and it should work, period. So let's go behind here and show you exactly what you got to do to get it in working again. So you're going to take that green wire I was talking about earlier, which should have been disconnected before you did any work. It's just a little RJ11 connector. You're going to remove your home phone from the jack if it was ever in there to begin with. And then you're going to take your green wire that I've been speaking of and put it right back where it was to begin with. And what we're going to do is take that base station right up to my kitchen and see if it works. 
So here we are in my kitchen. We're just here on the counter. We got the base plugged into the outlet over here. And we have one of our phone jacks over here. So I'm just going to put a disclaimer. I'm posting this video whether it works or not because that may or may not be the issue, but I'm positive, almost positive, I should say, that what I did in the garage was the reason why it wasn't working. It could just be something else, but I'm almost positive that's it because ever since I smashed that box with the ladder, it stopped working. So I do not consider myself an expert, and you don't have to follow my advice if you don't want to. I'm not going to... Uh, think that's bad if you don't but I am not an expert I don't know what I'm doing I all I know is I did some research and I found out that IDC splicers are the thing to use on phone lines and I just inserted it and I clipped it and I did everything I was supposed to do so this is a new experience for me so enough of me talking I guess let's just test it out I'm a little nervous right now we're just gonna take this and plug it right into the phone jack. So here it is. I'm gonna put push the speaker phone button on my phone and we'll see what happens. And there you go. I don't think it gets any more real than that. And just to verify that this is not in any way edited video, I'll call my cell phone live and I'm not gonna show you exactly my number. So I will hang that up so you guys can't hear the dial tones while I'm dialing and I'll hold the phone away but I will keep this video live going okay so I'm not going to show you my number I almost did that by accident ringing from the same exact jack it was just plugged into and you can see my iPhone is ringing home. So that is just enough proof for you guys, I guess. And this has been quite a lengthy video. But those of you who are out of a home phone because you made a silly mistake like mine, you're probably going to be glad you've seen this video. So I really hope this does help. I know I say that a lot of times throughout this video. But honestly, that's what I set out to do. Any other day, I would have just gone in my garage and done it in like two minutes or less but I took the time to show you guys and I hope you appreciate that so comment like subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time